Hi and welcome to Country Music Social Media Sessions and I'm delighted to have the wonderful Sarah Rose with me today. How are you? Oh, I'm very well, thank you, Helena. Good, nice to see you. So it's the first time we've kind of met sort of face to face, even if it is uh, over the internet, but it's lovely to have you on board here at Country Music Social Media. How have you been Thank finding it so you. far? Fantastic. Yeah, I've had um, two songs released so far since I've been with you and I've had lots of fantastic radio play um, and I have another single coming out in August. So I'm looking forward to working with you on that one. Yeah, can't wait to get that one. So we're going to talk about, because I've been looking at your page, and a Hollywood Independent Music Award. So what's this? What's this all about? This yes. Well, um, I um, put one of my songs forward, Love I Never Wanted, um, earlier in the year, and it is a nominee. So <clears throat> I'm so excited about that. Um, I can't believe it. In fact, there's some amazing names on there. Um, I don't expect to get any further. I'm just really happy to be a nominee. And the award ceremony is on the 18th of July at the Avalon in Hollywood. It's a red carpet event. I know some people that have been before and it is an amazing occasion. Um, but sadly, um, I'm not going to be able to go. Um, but um, I really hope everyone has an amazing time. I'm sure they will. And I'm sure your uh, song will do very well because it's fantastic. It has had a lot of radio play. And you've been very popular um, with the radio stations, um, which is great because you did your other one, The Love I Never Wanted, you got, didn't you? Um, and then you, you're putting out a new one very soon, which, um, what's that one called? Can we? Can you tell us yet? Yes. Yeah, it's called Still You. I haven't actually, you haven't heard it yet, um, but it does have a really nice country vibe. I originally wrote this one as an anniversary song um, for my friend's parents who love music. And I asked them about their story and about the music they love. So I built this song around their story, but I've kind of changed it since then. But what's in there are lots of references to songs um, like from the 70s that they really like. So when you listen to it, if you sort of listen out for those, it kind of makes it quite fun. That's amazing. That's, that's nice. And it's nice to write something personal because I find a lot of the type of genre we do, it's a lot of storytelling. And if you're anything like me, yes. relationships, I observe other people, my own, others, you know, just lots of different things. And then suddenly you've got a story there. And to write someone so personal, yeah. you find it hard. You'll find it flowed quite well with that kind of a setup. I've, I found it quite an easy process because I had all this imagery immediately from the information they gave me. Like um, he used to ride on his Triumph America motorbike and pick her up and all this stuff, which immediately put me somewhere. And then with the um, I basically used lyrics from the songs they love, kind of snuck them in there um, as little nods that if you know they're there, you kind of notice them. And I, I found it a really fun process. Actually, I'd like to do it again. Absolutely. And um, I'm looking forward to hearing that one, actually, so I can guess the guess the song lyrics that you put yeah. in. I've got here, Making of Us, and we had Love I Never Wanted. Uh, and obviously Love I Never Wanted is the one up for award. Your new single's coming out. Yes. Now. We'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. August. And end of August, yeah. And you had a top ten with uh, Making of Us? Top ten on Yes, iTunes. on the iTunes. It was the singer-songwriter chart. Well Thank you. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was amazing to kind of see my song up there. So, yeah, that was fantastic. And that one... Um, the story of that one was sort of like my own story. I wanted to write a sort of first dance song, like a Ed Sheeran, Perfect, something like that. Um, and so I told my own story for this one. Oh, OK. And again, that was kind of like a fun process. Yeah, so it's, um, it's a, bit of a, a bit of a romantic, are you? Well, I go through phases. <laughs> so I've done a, I did a kind of a set of songs, I suppose, that were quite sort of nostalgic and romantic. But I'm working on an album at the moment. And that's inspired by ghosts, myths and legends. So there's a lot more. Well, there are some love songs in there, too, but there's also a lot of darker stuff in there and grittier stuff. And I will be sharing that probably next year. Uh, one of the songs on there I co-wrote in Nashville on my recent trip um, in April. And it's got a slightly different vibe. Um, yeah, so that'll be a little bit different when it comes that's out. Really interesting, actually. The ghost myths and all that. I love all that stuff. It's, it's great, great. Yeah. I like the whole mysterious kind of stuff. I like to you have your upbeat kind yeah. of stuff and your ballads and you know you love your stuff, but then to go something a bit darker, it's quite nice and it yeah. brings type of songwriting, doesn't it? Which which I like. So it really do does. Title. I do at the moment. I've got love stories and legends, but it might change. That's just a working title. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, that works for me. Yeah, I, I, I do the same sort of have a working title, then I change it, God knows how many times. And then I usually go yeah. back to the title, to be fair. So uh, oh, I'm looking, really looking forward to hearing that. So um, you're going to be doing a lot of work on that. Um, have you got yeah. any plans when it comes to do tours and things like that? Are you going to come around to a few gigs? Because I know you gig as well. Yeah. Um, so I haven't got anything particularly coming up over the summer. I'm doing a festival that you might know of being... Uh, Bournemouth it's the Southampton in the city oh, yeah. festival end of September oh yeah um next year I'm booked to support Chris Wood who's quite a prolific folk artist and I'm thinking about putting together a mini tour around my album release so um maybe that support slot will kind of that's in March maybe that will be the beginning of a series of gigs but because I'm really in a recording phase at the moment I'm kind of focusing on getting that side of things done and then I'm going to shift the focus to sharing the songs live it's a it's an interesting process do you find when you start writing an album do you find it all comes naturally do you drop down ideas have you got ideas for songs or do you think oh, yeah, I'm just going to wing it and see how it goes and see what comes out do you have like a process because the songwriting process can be very different well it for everybody. Yeah, I mean, this is the first time I've done an album. I've done singles, um, and I wanted to do a body of work that fits together. Um, I've pretty much got all the songs, but I've got a few other seeds of ideas. So I want to write everything and then pick my favourites. Um, but because I'm in that process right now, I kind of want to get the creative side of it done while while I'm there. Because for me, preparing for gigs and, and doing gigs and marketing I feel like it's a for me a very different kind of part of the brain in a way um and I kind of want to treat it as a separate season to this sort of intensive writing and recording well you're local to, I say local to me anyway because you're in Winchester so we're the two sort of southern girlies yes. and, uh, you've been always been around the, the south yes yeah and uh and you went to Nashville um so I grew up here yeah I went to Nashville yeah. yes it was my first time in Nashville and um, I was lucky enough to do some co-writes with some fantastic Nashville writers. And I have to say, I learned quite a lot in that time. Um, it was two weeks I was there um, about the way they write out there and certain conventions, which I'd say is a little different to what I had done before, which I'll definitely bring into my work moving forward. So just a couple of things like um, the first thing in a co-writing environment, it was all about the truth and finding something that resonates with everybody in that group personally. So it's coming from a place of truth. So where for my love stories and legends, I might have written a song about a ghost that haunts somewhere in Winchester. And I sort of told that story. That might not be something I would do in Nashville. Or if I did it, we would kind of find an entry point that we could all bring our own personal experience into. So that was the first thing. And I love that because I do agree that if you can find a place where the story and your personal experience meet, the song's going to be stronger. Um, the other thing in terms of process, um, well, rhymes rather, is that they use hard rhymes. So whereas with a lot of my pop stuff, or pop singer-songwriter stuff, I might use near rhymes. Um, they didn't do that in Nashville, the hard rhymes all the way. So I thought, oh, that's quite interesting. And I wrote a song back home afterwards where I just used those conventions. Um, another thing that I noticed they do quite a lot over there, which I've been doing anyway, is putting the title at the end of the chorus. So the whole chorus is sort of taking you to yeah. that title and that payoff, like wrapping it up at the end sort of doing that anyway quite a lot of the time but I've sort of been playing into that more um since getting there but also just the support everybody gives each other is incredible because so many people are musicians writers performers everybody knows how hard it is and it's just just a really supportive environment sounds great that's yeah. so much treat kind of thing it does sound amazing and I, I bet you did learn a lot out there yeah and as well so you said obviously you said you grew up around the south yeah, I grew up around the South and then I was in London for uni and for quite a while, um, which is an amazing place to be because you can do an open mic any night of the week. Like there's so there's so many places to perform. There's so many people to write with. Everything seems to be there. But I kind of wanted to be out of the main city, 
um, day to day, which is why I kind of moved back to Winchester. But I must say, I do access London a lot. But that said, since the pandemic, so much has moved to online um, that even when I'm working with somebody that I could go to their studio, I now do all my vocals at home and I like doing that. So um, I find that a lot of the stuff I do is remote, at least initially, um, for the, the basics of the song. Occasionally I'll go and record my vocals with somebody, um, but I do enjoy doing them myself and I really like vocal production and thinking about all the backing vocals and the arrangement. Still part of it track isn't it and uh, but we're very much looking forward to hearing your new one and your new yeah. album so get it to us as soon as you can or get it off the radio before i let you go where can we find you where people listening to this today where can they find you so most of my socials are sarah rose songwriter it's my website instagram uh facebook um and on spotify i'm sarah rose there are a few sarah roses <laughs> <laughs> Um, but hopefully you'll recognise me or at least some of the, the names of my songs. Uh, so, yeah, that's where you'll find me. Please do that's have a listen. Really yeah, no, it's, it's been great talking to you. Songs are great. And as I say, they're very popular on radio. So we look forward to getting the next ones. Thank you so much. Oh, for thank you, Sarah. And we'll speak very soon. Thanks, Helena. Uh, and so yeah, speak soon. Check her out online if you can, if you can find out, which you will. Sarah Rose, songwriter. And we'll uh, hopefully get some more downloads and some more subscribers. Do subscribe. Do subscribe. Very important. Take care and I'll speak to you soon. Life is kind of funny, you wake up wishing I